Hello and welcome back to the A Manifester podcast. I am your host, Katie J. This entire episode is going to be produced by me, which is why you didn't hear any fancy intro music. You're not going to hear any fancy outro music. My podcast manager, Kristen, normally does all of that for me, but I gave her the week off. I just had a divine download that maybe she needed a little bit of space and me time, some Kristen time. So I texted her yesterday and said, Kristen, I'll produce an episode this week. You take some time off. And it turns out she was dealing with some crazy shit at home, including a small fire incident. So I'm really honored and blessed to have that connection with the divine where I can receive those types of downloads and know when somebody needs additional support um, in a way that I am easily able to facilitate it. So this episode is 100% produced by me. It's been a minute since I've produced a podcast episode. I've mainly just been recording them and sending them off to my amazing podcast manager. So I just wanted to take a moment and thank her for everything she's done for this podcast, all of her consistency and help and insights, and she's just incredible, and she's the first member of my team that I've ever hired, so I just feel very blessed to have a podcast manager as amazing as Kristen. This week on the A Manifestor podcast, I am going to be discussing a topic that has come up several times on Instagram in the A Manifestor community. So many of you have been mentioning how overwhelmed you feel in the spiritual awakening, spiritual journey process that you're going through. And for a while, I just sat with that because I wasn't really sure how to respond or um what advice or insights to give you, but I sat with it and I allowed spirit to come to me and to speak through me. And so I wrote some notes down for today and some of it will just be off the cuff, but the main topic is overcoming spiritual overwhelm. So let's get started. Maybe, maybe you're not even sure what we mean by spiritual overwhelm. Maybe let's back up a little bit. So the spiritual journey from my experience, is the process of remembering. The process of remembering who you are, what you are, why you're here, all of the big picture questions around life and your experiences. And it's my belief and my knowing that we are all souls. All of us are just souls occupying these skin suits, (laughs) this bag of meat and bones and tendons, if you will. And as we occupy these skin suits, or rather, as soon as we came into the physical form um, through the portal that is our mother's, When we came into the physical form, we knew everything. We knew that we were love and light. We knew that we were capable of everything that we desired. We knew that we were worthy. And over time, we were told otherwise and we learned otherwise and we were domesticated otherwise. So the process of going through a spiritual awakening is realizing and remembering everything that we once knew, everything that is our true essence, whether that's your purpose, whether that is um, how to heal, whether that is what you are worthy and capable of. It's going to show up in everyone's lives in a variety of different ways. My first spiritual awakening came to me during my yoga teacher training when I realized what my purpose was and I realized that I had the ability to live out my purpose and my passions and my pleasures on earth. I didn't have to work a nine to five job. I didn't have to sit in a cubicle for the rest of my life. I didn't have to nervously ask for time off from my boss. I could call the shots and I could create a life that set my heart on fire and I'm doing that now and it's a beautiful and fun journey and it's all been unfolding with grace and ease. That doesn't mean that there haven't been times where I've felt lost and I've felt fear and I felt doubt. All of those things are not mutually, they're not exclusive from the spiritual journey. In fact, they are a part of it because 
it's by going through those things that we come out on the other end and realize the truth of who we are. So some people go through their spiritual journey and are feeling a bit overwhelmed, meaning there's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of books out there. There's a lot of Instagram accounts out there. There's a lot of trainings out there. What do I do? Where do I start? How do I get to the point where I'm enlightened, right? How do I wake myself up? How do I wake my friends and family up? Do I need to wake my friends and family up? And just asking and and sitting with a lot of questions. And the first thing that I want to mention is that know that that's okay. Know that you are on a unique and very special journey. You are on a hero's journey, a heroine's journey. You are battling the parts of yourself that no longer serve you while also calling in the treasures of this life. And that's really exciting, you guys. So let's just take a deep breath together so we can really settle into the fact that everyone's journey is unique and that we can be gentle with ourselves. We can um, not judge ourselves for not being at a certain point in our lives or for being for a little bit further behind maybe someone else in your circle. So let's just take a, a deep breath in together. So first empty everything out in your out of your lungs. Deep breath in through your nose. Hold at the top and exhale. You are unique. You are special. You are divine. You are custom made and so is your journey. So before we continue, let that settle into your bones. Your journey doesn't need to look like anybody else's and there's no need to rush. Everything is unfolding as it should. In divine timing and with its own unique purpose. Now let's get into some of the bullet points that I wrote down for today. Okay, overcoming spiritual overwhelm. First off, the first thing I wrote down is actually something I just touched on. Everyone is on their own unique journey. Not all gurus, spiritual leaders, books, speakers, and IG profiles, Instagram profiles, will resonate with you or with your friends. So maybe someone is sending you, hey, look at this. IGTV video, look at this YouTube channel, look at this book that I just read. And if those things interest you and are something that pique your curiosity or maybe what my mentor calls a golden thread, maybe they're a part of the golden thread. And a golden thread is just the clues, the signs, the omens, the feelings that either continuously showing up in your life or are um, aligned with heart and meaning for you like oh people keep mentioning this guy Ram Dass like several times in the last week someone's brought him up maybe I should look into him you know or um, my mentor talks about how she always used the chakra system for her healing purposes so I'm gonna buy a book that that is interesting and align with the chakra system. So I would encourage you to, whenever something comes across your awareness, um, pay attention to it, but don't give it so much weight that, you know, it stresses you out that you haven't looked into it, that you haven't read that book, that you haven't even finished that article or whatever. Just know that everyone's path is different and no, there's no such thing as a linear path. There's absolutely no such thing. You will go off on tangents in your spiritual path. You will get sidetracked and maybe a little bit lost sometimes and know that that is all okay because it's all 
serving a purpose. You might not know what that purpose is today or next week or in this decade, but I know, I know, at least in my life, that everything that has happened along my journey has helped me, served me in some way. Know that your spiritual journey is like music. It is deeply personal and constantly evolving. Your interests are going to evolve. That golden thread is going to lead you in places that you could have never dreamed of a year ago or even a month ago. And the only thing that's constant in this world, you all, is change. I said you all instead of y'all. I'm going to say y'all from now on because you all sounds weird and it takes up too much time. (laughs) The only thing that's constant in this world is change, and that includes your journey. No such thing as a linear journey. The second way to avoid an over... over, Ooh, got a little cayenne pepper in my throat. The second way to um, overcome spiritual overwhelm is through ritual and ceremony. So ritual and ceremony is used for a variety of reasons, to bless, to honor, to set intentions, um, just to practice, to um, meditate, to send gratitude and blessings. There's just so many different ways that you can use ritual and ceremony. And I cannot speak for your body. I cannot speak for anybody else's body, but I know that my body loves routine. For a while, I was really wanting to, and I still kind of want to, but with a little bit more structure. I've, I, For a while, I've really wanted to live the seasonally nomadic lifestyle where I spend part of the year in the mountains and part of the year in the tropics. And I do still think that there is a reality where that will make sense. But right now, I know that my body loves having consistency, loves having routine. And I incorporate both ritual and ceremony into my routines and into my life because it's a way that I can have a spiritual practice that is literally ingrained, woven into the fabric of my lifestyle. And it stops feeling like this overwhelming thing I need to do or um, practice that I feel like I should be doing, but I'm not doing. Instead, I just do it regularly. So a few examples are I bless my food before I eat it. That's something that I've done my entire life. Um, Something that my parents taught me growing up and we always did in our household. And for a long time, I didn't understand it. I thought we were, you know, just saying, stopping to say a prayer uh, before we ate. And I didn't really understand the intention behind it. Now as an adult, I literally put my hands over my food and I say something along the lines of, Thank you so much for this abundance. Thank you for this fresh, local, organic, whole foods that are sitting on my plate. Thank you for the hands. Thank you for the energy. Thank you for the love that went into the creation of this food. Thank you for bringing it into my life and for making it a part of my body so that I can continue to serve, so that I can continue to grow, and so that I can continue to be a light in this world. Use this this food to nourish my body. Thank you. Namaste. Amen. Pura Vida. And I do this for every meal, for every single meal that goes into my body. I bless that meal. And that ritual alone has brought so much more peace and calm and Oh, just really, it's been, it's just brought so many blessings into my life, truly. So one way to um, overcome spiritual overwhelm is to just create rituals and routines that you constantly have in your schedule. So for another example is my morning ritual. I wake up, I stretch, I meditate, I journal, I read, I walk my dog, and somewhere in there I make tea too. So those I mean, that is a spiritual ritual, like all of those things, the meditation, the journaling, the reading, all of it is spiritually related. And I start off my day with that energy, with that 
knowing and that guidance. And it's just been a really effective way for me to start off and initiate every single day with the energy that I want, you know, instead of the energy of overwhelm, I I immediately have to check my phone, I immediately have to check my email, I immediately have to go to the next thing. No, 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 no. I immediately need to settle into my energetic body and set my intentions for the day and connect to my desires and my gratitude. So if there is a part of your spiritual journey that you feel you want to do every day, whether that's yoga or journaling or meditation or maybe not every day but checking in with your mentor on a regular basis – Find a rhythm and a routine for those things so that they, they, do, they don't have to be something that you think about and plan for and plan around. They're just there. They exist in your schedule already. And at least for my things, for my daily spiritual rituals and practices and ceremonies, they have gotten to the point where I can't not do them. Like literally they just make – such a difference in my day when I don't journal and read and meditate in the morning. I just, I can't during the day. Everything, things will stress me out a lot more. I will get irritable a lot more. Um, Anger starts to flare up and I realize, oh, I didn't meditate today. I didn't tune in. (laughs) So that's the second thing that I would recommend is establishing a ritual or routine with your spiritual practices. And The third thing that I'm going to mention is to get a mentor. I launched headfirst into the spiritual journey um, five years ago. Well, I shouldn't even say that. Five years ago, I started my spiritual journey, but I was still very reluctant to fully devote everything to it because... I was so lost. I was really confused. I, you know, grew up in a very religious uh, household and... When I finally got to the point where I realized I didn't, I didn't associate with any one religion, I kind of just floated around in this like, I don't know what spiritual means world for a long time. And then I got a mentor, Jen. And Jen has been my spiritual mentor for the past, oh my gosh, like maybe year or so. And we meet usually every other week. And discuss things that are on my heart and how to move through the world from a heart-centered spiritual lens. And it's just working with Jen has completely shifted the way that I show up in the world. It's completely grown my... Completely grown. I don't know if that's actually a thing. It's definitely grown my confidence in myself as a coach and as an entrepreneur and as a woman and as someone who is a container for the embodiment of the feminine. It's just been a complete game changer to work with somebody who is well versed and well studied in the physical world or sorry, in the spiritual world. A lot of times when our doubts and our fears and our overwhelm stays in our brain, it tends to distort. We tend to highlight certain areas of our life that maybe aren't serving us or put all of our attention into a certain conversation that really meant nothing, but we'll just mull it over in our head for weeks and weeks and weeks. So I've found it really helpful to talk it out with someone, specifically someone whose job it is to study, understand, and hold space for spiritual growth. And that's exactly what I do with my clients as well. I know at at one point with Jen, I I was like, I don't know if I can, like, I want to do what you do, but I don't feel like I have the skills to do it. And she was like, well, first of all, she's like, I'm not really doing much. I'm holding space and reflecting back to you how it is that I see you through a loving lens. And so in that way, what Jin does and what I do for my clients is we hold space as a conduit for divine love, for 
divine, loving, compassionate energy. And when you show up in a coaching session with all of your worries and fears and blocks with somebody who is there to reflect back to you what your true nature is, what your actual worth is, what your value and your contribution is to this world, you leave that conversation with so much more inner strength and so much more clarity and so much more direction. And I've found that to be the case with working with a mentor and I've found that to be the case with working with clients as well. And I continue to go back to my mentor because she holds me to a standard of love. She holds me to a standard of peace and to a standard of abundance because she's no, she knows that I'm capable of all of those things. And she will call me out on my fear-based stories. She'll help me process them, heal them, and integrate them into a new empowering story. And that exact process is something that I have learned to do with her, to do on my own, and then to also do with clients and help them move through their own limiting beliefs, doubts, and fears. The last thing that I'm going to mention when it comes to overcoming spiritual overwhelm is to be open to change. The only constant in this world is change. So as you learn, as you grow, as you evolve, as you meet new people, you might change your opinion. Your opinion, your beliefs, your thought processes are all going to change and grow and evolve with you. So I'll say today, I believe and I know one thing to be the truth. But as I maybe read a new book or encounter a new mentor or register for a new course, I might receive another download that makes something even more clear to me that makes something um, that I once thought to be true, to be inaccurate and untrue. So I'm no longer going to say that like steadfast, 100%, this is the one and only way. I will never say that to you. Your spiritual journey, like I mentioned before, is unique to you and know that it doesn't need to look like anybody else's. It doesn't need to sound like anybody else's. It's, and it doesn't need to even look like it looked a year ago or five years ago. You will change and grow and evolve as a spiritual being as you learn more and become closer and closer to your most authentic self, which, by the way, is love. On a more practical note, when it comes to being open to change, know that even if you establish a ritual or routine that uh, you keep up for a few months and then one day you realize it no longer serves you or you're not excited about it or you just simply don't want to do it anymore, that doesn't make you a bad spiritual person. That doesn't make you a failure at spiritual journey or evolution. It just means that your interests have changed. There was a time that I was waking up every single morning and doing a Dr. Joe Dispenza meditation. Do I believe that if I continue to do that meditation every single day that things would manifest with grace and ease? Yes. Do I believe that by stopping that meditation that things will stop manifesting with grace and ease? No. I have other practices. I have other things that I'm drawn to right now that will give me that sense of connectivity and energy energetic alignment to what it is that I desire. So know that even your practices and rituals and routines around the spiritual world and your spiritual journey can change. And to be open to that, there is no right or wrong way. You're not going too slow. You're not going too fast. You're going at it just right. No make wrong. There's no such thing as wrong on your spiritual journey. You're just doing it how, however makes sense for your unique path. So take a deep breath. Honor the fact that nothing stays the same. Everything always changes. You are always growing and changing. And that's a beautiful, beautiful thing in and of itself. So that's it for today's podcast. On the Woman Manifestor podcast, I'm your host, Katie J. Again, this is a self-produced episode, so there's going to be no outro. 
But what I will say is if you enjoyed this episode, then please take a screenshot of you listening to it, post it on your Instagram and tag me. I would love to stalk you right back. I would love to know more about you. I'd love to share it on my story. I just love it when listeners share that the podcast has touched them because it helps to it helps me to grow this podcast it helps me to keep producing this podcast and it helps the world heal and evolve and grow and become more spiritually attuned to their loving compassionate selves so i appreciate you sharing it with friends also if you're listening on itunes would love it if you rated and reviewed the podcast when you do that Again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You make this podcast possible and I just can't say thank you enough. So have a wonderful week. I will be back next week with another podcast episode and I think it'll probably be produced by Kristen. So hopefully the audio is better than when I do it and all the fancy uh, intro outro will be added next week. So have a wonderful, glorious, glowing week. I love you and take care.